Snastrunk. Hi there! Last week I went over what I thought were the 13 best Super Nintendo multiplayer games, and that's for both co-op and versus multiplayer, and now let's take a look at the best of the rest. Some games are just better with a second player, like take Mortal Kombat for example. Playing by myself against the computer nowadays, eh, that's okay. But playing with a second player while trying to figure out all these ridiculous moves, that's a way better time. Let's start the best of the rest with Contra 3, The Alien Wars. You don't need some guy on the internet to tell you that this is a great game, single player or co-op. I mean, come on, look at these crazy machine monster things you have to fight. This game is incredible. And yeah, multiplayer is fun, but be forewarned, the game gets a bit tougher with a second player because there's a lot more cheap deaths, and there's even more chaos and carnage and stuff on the screen, so it can be hard to see what the heck is going on, and it even occasionally gets to the point where that old Super Nintendo slowdown comes into effect. Plus, the top-down levels suffer the most because your viewpoint is split in half. That's a bummer. But yeah, if you're willing to power through some cheap deaths and just deal with the slowdown or maybe even patch the game, then hell yeah, Contra 3 is an amazing co-op game. I mean, it's an incredible game on its own, but you already know that. Let's move on to Kirby Superstar, and this was the game I had the hardest time leaving off of the list. This one very cleverly allows a second player to join your game by allowing player one to exchange a power-up for a little helper dude who hops around behind you. In a single player campaign, they'd be controlled by the computer, but just press start on the second controller and bam, you've got a second character to play as. I should mention that this only works in some of the game modes in Kirby Superstar, but for straight ahead platforming done Kirby style, this is perfect. There's also Kirby's Dream Course, otherwise known as the game on the SNES Classic where everyone asked, what the heck is that game? Well, it's kind of like Putt-Putt or Billiards, but using Kirby as the ball, and you've got all sorts of wacky courses and obstacles to contend with. This one can be a bit tricky to get the hang of since the physics can be all over the place at times, but it's definitely a unique game. There's not much else out there like it, and it's well worth checking out with the second player if you haven't already. Secret of Mana is also a very good multiplayer game with great music and lots of hacking and slashing with all sorts of different weapons. You can even add a third player eventually so three people can all switch between the main dude, the girl, and the sprite. This game comes with a caveat though, when it comes to multiplayer, you're gonna have to play single player for a little while until you find the girl. And then she leaves. And then you get the sprite for a while. But the point is, it's kind of an up and down experience when it comes to multiplayer, but I suppose it's not all that hard to just have a save point prepared ahead of time. Either way, this is a great choice, because the game is so simple. Just pick a weapon and go to town. Since I mentioned Secret of Mana, I also have to talk about Seiken Densetsu 3, although I gotta say that you're probably better off playing the recent remake these days, but still, if you're feeling froggy and you want to play the original, that's another game that's a ton of fun to take on, with even more characters, more story, more options, and more stuff going on. Again, it's structured similarly to Secret of Mana, where you gotta play single player for a while before running into another character. But this game is still well worth your time, especially when you've got a friend or two to run through it. Bear in mind you'll need a patch to make this one work with three players, but a second player works just fine with that one. Joe and Mac is a Super Nintendo game I don't hear talked about a whole lot. I played this one multiplayer for a video on Gaming Jay's channel years ago, and for a two-player game, it holds up really well. The controls take a little bit of getting used to. This is a slower, more deliberate game. The jump reminds me of Arthur's Jump and Super Ghouls and Ghosts, but it's not game-breaking or anything. What I like most about this game is that it's not all that difficult, and it has a ton of charm and personality, which makes it a great time with the second player. Sunset Riders is kind of like Contra 3, another Konami run and gun that's pretty dang tough, but still a lot of fun. The boss fights in this one always give me a lot of trouble, so it's nice to have help from someone else, or at least be able to watch someone else die just as often as I do. But this is another game where the Super Nintendo port might just be as good as the arcade, same as Turtles in Time. Here's a few games that were only released in Japan, but are still playable today any way you can. Longtime viewers of the channel know how much I love Great Battle 4 and Great Battle 5. They're action games made up of all sorts of characters ranging from Gundam, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, among many, many others. And these games were made by some of the folks that worked at Capcom back in the day, so these are well-made, polished games from start to finish. Great Battle 4 is mostly a side-scroller similar to Mega Man X, but Great Battle 5 combines that with some gallery shooter stuff stages, and a Wild West kind of a motif. They're both co-op and they're both excellent playthroughs. There's also the games from the Goemon series that never made it over to the United States. We got Legend of the Mystical Ninja over here, and that's an excellent co-op platformer with a lot of gameplay variety and a surreal atmosphere. 
There's also three more co-op platformers that were only released in Japan, and these games can get pretty nuts, as you can see. At one point, you're commandeering this goofy Goemon mech thing, you're hopping around in vehicles, you're fighting shadow puppets, one player can piggyback onto another, and this is just the second game in the series I'm showing. The others have even more to offer, so check them out any way you can. Wild Guns is worth mentioning, of course, but it's in a similar category as Seiken Densetsu 3 in that it's an awesome multiplayer game, but you're better off playing the recent remake from Natsume. I highly recommend checking that one out if you can, but if you want to stick to the old Super Nintendo, you really can't go wrong there. It's the best gallery shooter on the system. There's also Run Saber. This one is a little more under the radar, and it's kind of like the Super Nintendo's answer to Strider. It's a short playthrough with only five levels, but it's quality co-op action that's cut from the same cloth as Contra 3 with all sorts of craziness, like, you know, just casually going out for a stroll on the surface of this fighter jet as it races through the sky at a thousand miles an hour. Of course, I gotta mention Super Smash TV, and this is another game where the Super Nintendo port is very good, almost as good as the arcade, because the Super Nintendo controller lends itself so well to the basic controls of Smash TV. The D-pad moves you around, while the face buttons act as a second D-pad controlling your aim. This is a tough game though, one of those that has so much crap on the screen at once you might get a headache, but it's still a lot of fun. Another one off the beaten path is Soldiers of Fortune, and our friends overseas might know this one as the Chaos Engine. This is quietly one of the best multiplayer games on the Super Nintendo. It's another top-down shooter like Smash TV and like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, but in this one, there's six different soldiers you can play as, all with different weapons, plus four different skills you can level up as you go. This is a game you should seek out no matter what, whether it's single-player, multiplayer, or whatever. It's well worth your time. Real quickly, I want to mention the beat-em-up and fighting game genres, and really, there's so many here to choose from. You really can't go wrong with Final Fight 3, or Knights of the Round, or Battletoads and Battle Maniacs, or Battletoads and Double Dragon. I could list like 10 more quality titles, but I personally like Final Fight 3. Similarly with fighting games outside of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, you really can't beat Killer Instinct or Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter. Those are the two that I always go back to. Gotta mention some shoot 'em ups, and there's two very good ones that play extremely well with two players with minimal slowdown. The first is Aero Fighters, also known as one of the Super Nintendo cartridges that goes for a stupidly high price. So, this is one you gotta play any way you can. I always really liked Aero Fighters because everything feels like it has some weight to it. Sometimes in space shooters, everything feels too floaty, but flying a fighter jet like this and effortlessly crushing everything in your path feels a lot more satisfying, especially when there's two jets. Another really satisfying shooter is Firepower 2000. Here you've got one player as a tank and the other as a helicopter, and the game does a nice job balancing out enemies that can only be destroyed by one or the other. It's a good time. If you're looking for an easier shoot 'em up experience and an easier game in general, there's Poppin' Twin B, and this is another game I had trouble leaving off the list, the main reason being that this game has a couples mode. That means that most enemy fire will be focused on player one. It's a really nice feature to help get kids into games like this, or just for people like me that aren't very good at shoot 'em ups. If you're looking for older arcade stuff, Miss Pac-Man has both two-player versus and two-player cooperative with four different mazes you can play through. Although bear in mind, in co-op, if one of you dies, you both die. So this is a game that could lead to some fisticuffs. On to racing games, Top Gear is the obvious pick here. This is one of those games where I feel like I'm mentioning it every four or five videos or so just because I can. I mean, come on, it was the very first video on the channel. So yeah, if you haven't played this one, make sure you do it. It's a great two-player game that maintains a fantastic sense of speed throughout the entire playthrough. But then some people need combat in their multiplayer racing games, and the best game for that, in my opinion, is Rock and Roll Racing. It plays just like RC Pro-Am for NES, so if you dig that game, then you'll dig this one too. And it's got a soundtrack good enough to get you potentially flagged on YouTube if you already use it in a video. My go-to sports game on Super Nintendo for multiplayer has long been NBA Jam or NBA Jam Tournament Edition, Hang Time, or anything from that franchise really, but a close second, believe it or not, is Looney Tunes B-Ball. Same as NBA Jam, this one is easy to pick up and play and get the hang of right away, and plus, this game is just plain funny. Who doesn't love seeing Elmer Fudd making it rain from 35 feet like he's Steph Curry? Or seeing another player get a pie thrown in their face, or having the ball get turned into a bomb? This game is a great time any way you slice it. It's one of my personal favorites on the Super Nintendo. 
If you're looking for an easy versus game off the beaten path, then there's Sanrio World Smash Ball. The game is really simple. There's six characters, six different settings, and you smack this disc thing back and forth. It's kind of like a vertical version of Windjammers, but with Hello Kitty characters. This game is fun though, and it's easy enough for anyone to get into. If you'd rather have just pure chaos, then you should play WWF Raw. Yeah, I know, it's a wrestling game, but even if you're not into wrestling, you'd be missing out if you don't play this one. It's such a great time with other people, because it's just unhinged. You're smashing people with chairs, tombstoning people left and right, there's a bucket you can hit people with. To this day, I still don't know why there's a bucket of all things in this game, and it makes me laugh every time I use it. Especially the way you just hit people in the arm. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm alone in that, but I find this game incredibly entertaining. A more polished wrestling game was made by Capcom called Saturday Night Slam Masters, and this is an arcade port, and it kind of plays like a beat-em-up more than a wrestling game. In fact, it's got Hagar from Final Fight as a playable character. This is another game that's compatible with up to four players, and Capcom gets all the typical wrestling stuff right. There's silly characters, big entrances, huge moves, and guys that look like they'd be batting sixth for the Marlins in Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball. And by that, I mean they look roided up to the gills. Whew, all right, that's it. That's 27 more multiplayer games, but I'm sure I left your favorite off this list, so let me know what it is in the comments. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.